Hi, I'm Ted Balaker with Reason.tv. Today I'll be speaking with ABC News correspondent and my former boss, John Stossel. Stick around and hear Stossel's take on bailouts, Bush, Obama, media bias, and how he collaborated with Drew Carey and Reason.tv to produce his new ABC News special, Bullshit in America. Something that sort of get your blood pumping. What do you think of, of this bailout mania that's sweeping the country? I think it's disgusting in that they keep saying everybody agrees that we have to bail these people out and we have to have the Fed spend trillions of your tax dollars guaranteeing this and that or the economy would collapse or it's already collapsing and it's just so irresponsible. They've got a $35 trillion Medicare liability already that they're not facing and now they're going to throw more trillions of dollars at this to stop this recession like we're not allowed to experience any pain in America there are recessions there are booms and busts the bubbles have to pop well speaking of booms and busts there was the tech bubble that exploded you know eight nine years ago nobody got bailed out then why not good question a uh, different attitude now in, in this case there are smart people may look like, like uh, Hank Paulson making the argument this is different you've got the credit lock the whole system is at stake and it's possible but global warming being a disaster is possible too and what I've learned over 30 years of consumer reporting is that the people closest to the problem panic and when they panic that is an invitation for government to get bigger it's like any, it's not war is the friend of the state, it's any crisis is the friend of the state. And the mad cow doctors were convinced we were all going to have holes in our brains and anybody who ate meat was at risk of these horrible diseases. The Y2K technicians were convinced all the planes were going to crash. Now it's Wall Street investment bankers who are closest to it who unfortunately are allowed to spend trillions of our dollars in their panic. Do you think some of the, maybe a lesson that the tech people might have learned is that they should have spent less time improving their products and more time spending money on lobbyists in Washington? Well, I hope not. I, I think it's not an accident that Microsoft and Google and all that were developed in the two capitals farthest from Washington, D.C., but now they spend money sucking up to Washington. It's, it's not a good thing for our prosperity. What sort of precedent or lesson does it tell someone who maybe is a responsible renter or someone who pays his mortgage on time, that the, the people who were perhaps irresponsible were biting off more than they could chew. Because uh, there are a lot of renters who would have liked to buy during the upswing. They decided, they looked at the books and they said, hey, it doesn't make sense for me, so I'm going to continue to rent. There's a lot of people who are paying their mortgages on time, and yet the federal government is coming in and renegotiating uh, lower payments for people who maybe were dishonest. What do you think about that? What, what lesson is that? Well, that's the moral hazard, and we all know about that. It clearly, if you reward irresponsible behavior, you'll get more bad behavior. But I don't know that that many people actually say, I'll overinvest because I know I can get a bailout at the other end. I just think it does create a culture which makes the bubble a bigger bubble. All this support for, we have to have more people owning homes and Fannie and Freddie will guarantee these mortgages encouraged a crazier bubble. And now you have to let the bubbles pop. You have to find a floor. Let's, let's take a quick look back at the Bush years. Reason Magazine and others have documented how spending has exploded to historic proportions. Regulations have ballooned. And yet people look back on the Bush years and say it's a failure of free market policies. What do you say to that? I say bullshit. Everybody says, see, your libertarian ideas, they're wrong, and this proves it. Well, first of all, there was no real deregulation. Glass-Steagall was done under Clinton, and he rightly defends that, and the banks that had more options under Glass-Steagall were not the ones necessarily that got into trouble. And under Bush, the regulators have added more of a spider web of little rules to our lives, more pages of rules than any administration ever. And more, the cost of regulation has gone up more under Bush than any president before. And yet, because of the bad media coverage and the assumption about Republicans or the free marketeers that supposedly were in charge, people think it was laissez-faire. 
Now, I'm sure there are some people at regulatory agencies, at least I hope they are, who said, you know, a lot of these rules are bad and we're going to be less aggressive about them under Bush. But that's not what caused this bubble. The bubble was government saying, lend more, lend more. You're, you're discriminating against poor people. You're racist. Lend to more people. That's not deregulation. What are your greatest hopes and fears for the Obama years? <sighs> My fear is that they'll spend us all into bankruptcy and we'll be like the people were in the Weimar Republic, where they're running around with wheelbarrows full of cash because inflation is so bad, or in like Zimbabwe today, because you know, 35 trillion in the hole for just Social Security and Medicare. They won't have the guts to raise taxes. I, well, maybe they will, but they won't be able to raise taxes enough to pay for Social Security and Medicare because you'd have to take just about all people made, and that would totally destroy the economy. They won't cut the programs because we older people want the best of medical care, and we're going to demand it, and the politicians can't say no to anybody, so I fear they're just going to print more money. What about the other side, the, the hopeful side? My hope is that, hey, Nixon went to China. Maybe Obama will be financially responsible, and maybe he'll do the things that Reason thinks should be done, like legalize drugs and prostitution and, and the, uh, the cr criminalizing of behavior between consenting adults. Well, what about the drug policy issue? There, there are some signals that Obama's giving that he's going to soften on that front, things perhaps like medical marijuana. Well, I hope he does. The signals I've heard is that he was appointing a hardliner to head the Drug Policy Office, so that was not a good sign. I don't know. I think uh, Hayek called it a fatal conceit to uh, think you can plan an economy. I think it's also a fatal conceit to predict what these politicians will do. Is the mainstream media biased? I know you, you get this question a lot, but people want to know. What do you think about that? Yes. Is it the fish don't feel the water kind of thing, or is it just that liberty itself isn't TV friendly? Like you can pass a minimum wage law and go interview the happy employee at Burger King who just had her wage boosted, but you can't interview the person who doesn't know that he wasn't going to get hired. That's part of it. It's certainly hard to show the people who are hurt by a government program that takes two cents from everyone or prevents a job from being created. You can't take a picture of that. But that's not just television. I think liberty intuitively is hard to get. Intuitively, the minimum wage makes sense. We want to help poor people raise the minimum wage. It's hard for people to understand how that hurts people. But plus, there is just the basic political bias that the people with whom I work read the New York Times and the Washington Post, and that's their world. Everybody around them agrees with them. They're all lean left, and they think that's the middle. What do you think of this whole internet thing? You, you think it'll catch on? <laughs> what, what kind well, of, what thank kind of God, that's really made a lot. Of, at least the internet showed people that there was a liberal media. Now the public at least knows that ABC, NBC, CBS lean left, CNN especially, MSNBC, because it gets talked about on the internet. And now, thanks to finally deregulation, uh, Fox TV, they have an alternative. But I made a lot of money. So you made some too in the days from the days when government monopoly limited the number of TV stations. The broadcast networks lobbied Congress and say, if you allow cable to come in everywhere, then poor people who can't afford cable will be deprived of free TV. So there were five channels that helped me make more money. But it certainly wasn't fair, and it's far better that we have 150 channels now. You've defined yourself before as a libertarian, someone who is uh, fiscally free market and, and uh, liberal on social issues. Do you think that worldview is gaining an influence or going the other way? I don't know. I mean, it's easier for me now because there's more point of view in TV. Uh, so that makes me think, at least now people know these ideas deserve a place at the table. That's why ABC lets me do it. But are we winning? Is, is this move toward more spending makes me think not. Nah.